start with this Barcelona spirit playing with the name tags. Have you noticed your name tags? They have no name, they have no pictures. You have to fill them yourselves. And what are we going to do now? I will ask you to open your books, but not from the regular cover, turn them to the other side and open them. You will find a circle with a color there. So, for the first activity we're going to share, we'll have to stand up and find the members of the team that have the same sign there. try to understand why this place is called Anaglyphos. And we are going to do it with some clues. Anaglyphos Art Factory. It has to do with art. We have a hen. What about the hen? But as we are good people, we are going, very nice people, we are going to give you a couple of clues more. Something to do with the number 27 and the group of people. And probably three people that many people here would know. So, you have 20 to 25 minutes to try to understand why this place is called Anaglyphos, why is this related to these people and this number, if you find it, that would be great. And if you get to know why do they have the hen, that would be wonderful. The idea, we have 50 minutes for this activity, a little less. So 20 to 25 minutes to debate, organize and decide. Then you choose a speaker and we'll have three minutes each to see what is the story you found behind it. So welcome to Barcelona, start working. Who would like, which team would like to start sharing what they found out? about Anaglyphos. Over there, the ones on the sofa. Dimitar is calling, Anna is calling. We can clap them. Be really cryptic. Password, password, chicken, uh, capital F, capital F, uh, capital Z, capital G, <laughs> U, capital D, capital H, J, S, U, D, X, um, Capital B, I, capital Y, E, uh, capital J, W, T, capital P. That's really a performance. Not only an interpretation, but a performance. Thank you. Did you get it? We can clap her more. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Let the others explain what you did. Because you got it. You got it right. That's the point. Carlos is putting up his hand over there. So let's see. What has she done? Okay, we first start with the uh, 27 and the people over the 27. They are a generation of uh, Spanish authors from different fields. Uh, you can see them, three of them, together. Uh, Lorca, Buñuel, and Dalí. They used to live together in the same residence in Madrid for the period they were, they were studying. And they came up with this anaglyphos to spend the time together when they to spend the free time. It's a really short composition where the third line is always a chicken. That's why she said, I don't know, we came up with another anaglyphos. Anna, over Anna there, said, 
We came up, for example, with Barcelona, Barcelona, the chicken, semiotic uh, thinking, for example. Could be another idea. For us. And we think it's really related with semiofest because it's they used to do it for having fun, like semiofest. It was really short, like the presentations in semiofest. And it has something to do with interpretation because these uh, compositions, they didn't used to have sense. They were no sense. Apparently. Apparently. Don't say Apparently. That. <laughs> Apparently, because uh, anaglyphos also is an image of 3D, and we really thought that this 3D means different points of view to see the same image. That's what is hidden behind all these words. Come on, can we clap him? What's it? Over there, Marta, tell hi, us. Hi, uh, we have a very long discussion here <laughs> to try to find out what it was, <laughs> but uh, we thought about it very much about the chicken. <laughs> and, and, and it was not so easy, but anyway, so we began, we began to talk about the cultural meanings of the chicken <laughs> to see if in case we come to some, some answers. Three different perspectives, three different uh, ideas and perspectives, and at the same time they were the leaders of these three <laughs> ideas. Uh, so it went that way. Uh, my colleague here from you, she thought as well, maybe here it could be a factory of the chicken's factory. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and another interpretation that we had, it was about, what other was? Just the 3D process presented in yeah. the 19th century is uh, anaglyphos, is the other one. Exactly, and we have the glasses, no? <laughs> we have the glasses of the three, three dimensions. You can see the glasses is a symbolic uh, meaning as well. The glasses that you see in three dimensions, and these three men uh, have these three dimensions and three perspectives. Okay, who else would like to share it? Yeah. Here we go. Max. Well, we just found that... Um, in 1927, the manifest group was written, so, and we thought it was Juan Gris, Lorca, and Dali, probably, you know. Yes. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it, it, it just seemed to be three... We shared that one. Like, three yeah. different visions, um, three-dimensional, you know, vision. Uh, of these three, three guys, representative from Spain, because the, the manifest group, you know, took people from, you know, across Europe, so just the Spanish ones. And we thought it was a copra, a rooster. And we thought it was new beginnings, you know, it was the beginning of something new, um, a new way of seeing things, surrealist, you know. We can clap her also, come on. <laughs> we had a, a lot of similar thoughts. Um, and I think what it came down to for us was that the chicken could be seen as a manifesto for Semiofest 2013 in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Or the chicken or the roof. It's, um, if you look at it, it's not quite in focus. So you're already questioning that sign. You're already thinking what's wrong with it. It's got red spots on it. <laughs> That's not normal for a rooster. Do we need the glasses? Do we need our 3D glasses so that we can see the chicken or the rooster properly? What are our glasses? Our glasses, maybe are us. Maybe it's us all together looking at the rooster in a different way, looking at that sign, talking it through, analyzing it together. And maybe, just maybe, this rooster could lay an egg. <laughs> Thank you so much, Max. We can clap her also. Uh, it was interesting that we were working, uh, looking for the meaning, the, looking for anaglyphos in the internet, and then telling each other about what it means for each other. So that's the what I like about the exercise, that we were always uh, looking for what is the meaning, who is this one, who is that one, and what's going on with the chicken and the red spots and the red and the green spots. And then we were analyzing our, in our own perspective. So I think that it's also really important uh, in the exercise. Well, it's a bit... It was a bit difficult here because I knew the answer. So, <laughs> so, um, but what we were trying to find out, you know, what I mean, the girls here were trying to find out who were, you know, the three people and 
what the relationship they, they had with Spain. So we thought here yeah, there was a Spanish theme going on. So what is all about Spain and how? So we start, we, we start thinking what was the purpose of Anaglypho? What was the reason for it? What, how, they, they, how they were playing it? And we were kind of imagining how the long nights they had, you know, playing the game and drinking whatever they were drinking. But um, yeah, so it was kind of more an exercise of imagining who and how and the long nights they had together playing this game. So that was how, how we Nice did. nights for sure. So thank you very much. You get what? Thanks. Um, yeah, we, we um, kind of got to the answer relatively quickly through the good offices of Google. So <laughs> we actually wanted to see whether we could find out what anaglyphos meant and then infer that it kind of gave us the answer. So we started thinking about this kind of group of people and we got sort of surrealism. So surrealism being this movement that was designed to sort of get to a deeper truth through deranging the senses. So in kind of challenging people with juxtapositions that would seem wrong. So, you know, Magritte and kind of you know, a, a room with no door and stairs that go nowhere and all that kind of stuff to challenge the mind and kind of explore the subconscious. Um, and, and again, sort of nonsense rhyme, automatism, this stream of consciousness writing, all these things were linked. So, you know, visual culture and um, poetry were, were, li were linked within this movement and that's what we, we kind of thought of and thought that the, the hen was almost like... Um, it's kind, of, it's kind of an amusing sign. It's something, I mean, I did a project recently on looking at the meaning of the rooster, and it's kind of quite an amusing sign, because it's quite sort of arrogant, but small at the same time. And I wonder if that could also sort of, um, it's a way of them thinking about the artistic um, process and, and what that means. That's what we got to, anyway. Thank you. We have Missy over here. Yes, so David, from the team over there. So, <clears throat> um, we split the world up and we, we looked for Glyph and, and Anna, which is, yeah, uh, rewarding. So a Glyph is an, an element of writing. And then we, no one of us is really firm in, in old Greek, so we had to, to Google that. Um, so Anna seems to be a prefix often related to an opposite or deconstruction in analyzers. So that sounds like, I don't know, doing the opposite of written culture, which leads us to visual culture, and maybe art is related to that. Um, so, and then we were quite proud to find the Declaration of Surrealism, which was published on the 27th of January in, in 1925. Um, and probably my personal opinion towards the hen is that it's a symbol for the old problem, which was first the meaning or the sign. Yeah. Very good. So, <laughs> but maybe that's yeah, both. Thank you so much, everyone.